One thing I want to talk about is the fact that DNA is a storage medium. In other words, it's a hard drive. You're a walking hard drive, your body. One gram of DNA, this is science, peer-reviewed science, by the way, guys. One gram of DNA, which is enough to put a little tiny drop on the tip of your finger, can store 700 terabytes of data. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, what, you know, etherical data or mystical data. I'm talking about real zeros and ones that make your phone work and make your computer work. Zeros and one bits of data, zeros and ones, can be stored on DNA. So these scientists, uh, the main one, George Church and Chris Shuri, those two actually together, are partners and scientists, they discovered this and they downloaded one of their books, one of their e-books onto the DNA, and then they uploaded it from the DNA back to the server again. They was like, whoa, wait a minute. You can encode digital bits of information directly onto DNA and upload it back again. What does that mean? Well, we're, we're walking USB drives, <laughs> literally. Now, here's what's really amazing about that. They then took that same ebook, downloaded it back to the DNA again, and they said, let's see how much we can go. They replicated the book 70 billion times in one gram of DNA. 70 billion copies of an ebook in one gram went up 433 petabytes of data. That would be enough hard drives if we were using conventional hard drives to fill up this whole park. Think about that. In one tiny drop inside of your body right now, you can store 13.5 billion years of data. Ironically, that's how old the universe is. So, you are the universe. You literally have all the information stored in your body from the beginning of time until this very moment, inside of you. So when people say the universe is in you, it's not just a figure of speech. Like, the universe is really in you because all bits of data and particles, all, all bits of, uh, of particles are all recycled over and over again. All atoms are recycled. Everything is recycled. You're, everything that was here from the beginning is here right now. Nothing's been added. Nothing's been removed due to the law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed. So you're just here right now in this particular form at this particular moment, but all the information in your DNA will go back if you had the capability of decoding it, will allow you to find this out. This is why, and some of you here know that I talk a lot about the Anunnaki, these Atlantean beings that came here in the distant past and genetically modified the existing hominid. They didn't create people. They modified people. This is one of the big things when people say, oh, the Anunnaki created us. Not, not really. If you really analyze the text, and I'm not just talking about Sumerian text, you have to go into several different versions of text, the Enumeration, Seven Steps of Creation, the Atra Asis Epic, the Epic of Gilgamesh. You go into uh, the Emerald Tablets. You discover that there was a genetic, there was already a hominid here, and it was genetically modified. That was our cousin before Homo sapiens existed. What did they do to us to make us into this slave race to do the work for them? They disconnected our DNA. That's what you have called now junk DNA. It's not junk, guys. It's unplugged DNA. Why did they unplug it? Because our cousins, unlike you've been taught, were way smarter than us. I'm not talking technologically smarter. I'm talking about spiritually smarter. More in tune with nature, more in tune with the universe, more in tune with the planet itself, the Schumann resonant frequency of the Earth. They had bigger brains, proven, because we found the skulls all over the planet. They had uh, probably, because of bigger brains, most likely had bigger pineal glands, which is your spiritual antenna. So they, 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 all humans right now, we have billions of magnetite crystals in our brains. We don't even use them. They probably had access to their magnetite crystals, which is what turtles use to navigate the oceans to come back to where they're going to lay their eggs and, and uh, birds. They, they flock to the south in the, in the winter and so forth, all using the magnetic field. Well, we have the same capability, but right now we've, we've been disconnected from using that. If a tsunami comes inland, before it even hits, all the wild animals run to the mountains and the hills. You never see wild animals getting swept away by a tsunami. But you see people, <laughs> we just stay right out there. And just, we're taking, look, the tsunami's coming. I'm live on Instagram. I mean, it's crazy. You know, so we've been disconnected. You know, we, our DNA has been disconnected. Our consciousness has been reduced. They've already scientifically proven and found out that a worship gene was embedded into the human genome. 
and they don't know who did it, but they can tell you that it was around 200,000 years ago, the same time that they discovered that chromosome number two in the human body was taken out, fused together, and two telomere caps were put on each end. Again, this is something done in a laboratory, admitted by mainstream scientists, but they can't figure out who did it. They can only tell you when. Oh, about 200,000 years ago. Well, what do the tablets say? 200,000 years ago is when they first genetic.